Hi everyone, welcome to this video. This is the second part of this presentation entitled Unstable Behavior of Current Mode Controlled DCDC Converters and its Solution. In the first video, Power Electronics number 50, we saw an introduction and we also studied the unstable behavior of the converter when it is operating with a duty cycle higher than 0.5. So today we are going to see the rest of this presentation. We will see the solution, which is adding an auxiliary ramp. We will also present what happens when we operate in DCM mode of operation, in discontinuous conduction mode. And we also present a very important aspect, which is the practical implementation of the auxiliary ramp, especially using the common integrate circuits used in this kind of control. Finally, as usual, we will present also several LTSPICE simulations to illustrate the different concepts. Remember that there is this other video, Power Electronics number 37, with more information related to the dynamic modeling of current mode controlled DCDC converters. So let's do a quick review of what we have seen in previous video. First, we presented the current mode control using the comparator, uh, the flip-flop and the clock. Then we analyzed the inductor current waveform with the different slopes during the on time and the off time and the relationship between the slopes and the duty cycle and the complementary duty cycle. Here we presented the stability analysis procedure by introducing a perturbation on the value of the current and analyzing the subsequent perturbations. Here we can see the procedure that we follow in the previous video so we can calculate the value of the different perturbations on the valley of the current. Then we analyzed the stability so we have seen that the converter operation is stable only if the value of the duty cycle is lower than the value of the complementary duty cycle. So this means that the value of the duty cycle has to be lower than 0.5. We checked this by doing a couple of simulation. Here we can see how the converter operation is stable as long as we keep the duty cycle lower than 0 0.5. And in this other simulation, we saw how when we increase the value of the peak current so that the required duty cycle is higher than 0 0.5, then we have a stable operation of the converter. So today we are going to see how to solve this issue so we can operate the converter with values of the duty cycle higher than 0 0.5. The way to make the converter stable for duty cycles higher than 0 0.5 is to add an auxiliary ramp, as shown here in blue, to the value of the reference peak current, which is this one here. So instead of keeping constant the reference value of the peak current, what we are doing is to decrease the reference value along the switching period following this ramp. The slope of this ramp is minus MA, so MA is a positive number. In this way, if we have a perturbation here on the valley current, as we have done before, if we decrease this value, then we are going to have a ramp for the current and we are reaching here a peak value of the current, which is lower than the previous one. So in this way, we are adding a degree of freedom in our system that allows us to make our system stable. So the idea is to add to the reference value of the peak current a negative ramp as shown here. But instead of doing this way, usually is more practical to do the implementation of this ramp as shown here. 
instead of adding here a negative ramp to IP, what we usually do is to add a positive ramp, as shown here with a slope MA, to the current waveform. So at the end, the situation is exactly the same, but this is easier to implement using the common integrated circuits, as we are going to see later. The rest of the circuit remains the same. We have the comparator, we have the clock, and then the flip-flop to drive the switch. Note that at steady state, we can still apply this condition that MD is going to be M prime times D prime because nothing has changed on the waveform. So this is a condition that is going to be fulfilled. So let's study in the same way the stability of our system when we include the negative auxiliary ramp. So if we do a perturbation on IV, as shown here, by decreasing the value of IV in this amount here, delta IV0, then we will have the ramp with the slope M or corresponding to the current, and then we will reach the peak value at this point, the switch is turned off, and then the current will decrease until the end of the period. So we have this new value for the perturbation of the valley current. So again, we studied the triangles that we have here, and we can get two triangles. One is this one that we uh, show here, which is given by this value here, which is exactly the same value of the initial perturbation, delta IV0. And then we have here the slope MA, which is corresponding here to this side of the triangle. And then here we have this part, which has a slope aim. And then this distance between this point and this point is the increasing on the duty cycle times the switching period. So here we have the complete triangle, and then from it we can get this expression very easily for the value of delta IV0. So this is negative because we are decreasing the value of the IV. And then here we can consider the other triangle, in this case, in this part with this distance and this other slope. So here we have a detail of this triangle. So we have this distance, with this, which is the uh, perturbation uh, at the end of the switching period. Then we have the slope MA or minus MA. Here we have the slope minus M prime, and this is the distance uh, corresponding to the perturbation, delta IV1, and again, this distance from this point to this point is the change on the duty cycle times the switching period. So again, analyzing this triangle, we can get this expression for the perturbation at the end of the switching period. And then working with these two expressions, then we can obtain this relationship between the final perturbation and the initial perturbation. And now, as we can see, we have the value of MA in the expression. So we have this degree of freedom. And as we have done before, after k cycles, we can generalize this expression and then we will obtain this value for the perturbation after k cycles. Again, we can see that the signs of the perturbations are going to change. For example, here is negative, so in the next period is positive, in the next period is going to be negative, and so on. So with this, we have now everything to go to the next step, which is to study the conditions to have a stable operation of the converter. So here we have the expression of the different perturbations, and we know that for the system to be stable, the values of the different perturbations has to be decreasing in time. So the condition is that this factor here has to be lower than 1. 
So this is the condition, and if we solve this inequality, then we can get this expression. So the condition is that the auxiliary ramp MA has to be greater than half the difference of M prime minus M. We can also express this in terms of duty cycle. So we know that this expression is fulfilled at steady state and we can apply it within a switching period because there is no relevant change during the switching periods of the slopes and the duty cycle. So finally we can get this expression here. The value of MA has to be greater than this value here, 1 over 2 times m prime times 1 minus d prime over d. So we can call all this value here as the limit value m limit. So now we can analyze the stability depending on the value of the duty cycle. So we have two cases. Case 1 is when d prime is higher than d. This means that the duty cycle is lower than 0.5. In this case, this factor here is negative. So the condition is that MA has to be greater than a negative value. And this is going to be always fulfilled because MA, as we have seen, is a positive value. So in this case, the condition is fulfilled as long as we keep MA greater than zero. Remember that the slope is minus MA, so this is a negative slope. If MA was negative, then minus MA would be positive. So we will be adding a positive ramp here, and then the system could be unstable for duty cycles lower than 0 0.5. Of course, we are not interested in this case. And then we have the second case in which we have d prime lower than d. So this means duty cycle greater than 0 0.5. So in this case the limit slope is going to be between 0 and 1 over 2 m prime and the slope ma has to be greater than this value. So one possibility is to make MA equal to M prime divided by 2 to this factor here. So we are going to assure that it's going to be higher than M limit. So this is the typical selection of the slope MA equal to 1 over 2 M prime. Of course, there are other possibilities for selecting the value of MA. The system will be stable as long as we keep this value greater than M limit. However, M prime divided by 2 is the smallest value of the slope that we can use to assure that we are going to fulfill the condition for all values of the duty cycle. Let's do an important consideration here depending on the topology that we are using. Remember that we have seen this table previously. We are assuming that we are going to regulate the output voltage as is usually done. So VO is constant and then we can see that for the back converter the slope M prime is going to be also constant. Same thing for the back boost converter. M prime is equal to VO over L, so it's going to be also constant. But for the case of the boost converter, the value of M prime depends on the input voltage. So we have to keep this in mind. So M prime is not going to be constant. It's only constant if we keep the input voltage constant. But if the input voltage is changing, then M prime is going to change. And then we have to assure that MA is going to be always greater than this value here. So in the case of the boost converter, we have to pay special attention to select the value of MA. So let's see now an example on how to implement this in our back converter. In this case, we have a value of M prime equal to VO over L. So VO is 5 volts and L is 100 microhenries. So we get this value here for M prime. And the sensor that we are using 
it has a gain which is one volt per ampere. We are measuring and directly here the current through the inductor with a gain of one volt per ampere. So the slope in terms of volts per second is this value here, 5 times 10 to the 4. So the slope that we are going to add is the value that we have seen before, ma equal to m prime over 2. So in volts, this means that at the end of the switching period, which lasts for 10 microseconds, the value of the voltage has to be, as we can see here, 0.25 volts. So this is the way in which we can define our ramp here. We have a low value of 0, a high value of 0.25, the frequency is 100 kHz and we are adding this ramp to the measure of the current waveform to be compared to the reference value in the comparator. Here we can see the simulation results. In red we have the current through the inductor. In blue we have the clock signal. In pink, we have the value of the peak current, the reference value. And in green, we have the addition of the current through the inductor and the auxiliary ramp. So we can see that this value follows the peak current reference. And here below, we have the output voltage. So we can see how in this part we have a voltage which is something like 3.5 volts. So the operation is with a duty cycle lower than 0 0.5 and the operation is stable. And then at this point we increase the peak uh, reference, so the output voltage is going to increase, it's increasing here, and we are getting a value something higher than 6 volts. So the duty cycle that we need at this uh, point here is higher than 0 0.5, and we can see how the operation now is stable. While previously, without using the auxiliary ramp, we got an uh, unstable operation with an output voltage higher than 5 volts. And now we can ask ourselves what happens in DCM, in this continuous conduction mode, when we operate in current mode control. So in DCM we are going to have waveforms for the current that start from zero, get to the peak value and then reach zero again before the end of the switching period. So in this case, we are not going to have any issue, even at duty cycles higher than 0 0.5, because the current is always zero before the end of the switching period. So there is no stability issue when we operate in DCM. Even if we are adding the auxiliary ramp, if we enter into DCM, the operation of the converter will remain stable. Here we have an example in which the converter is operating in discontinuous conduction mode with a duty cycle higher than 0 0.5 and we can see that the operation is stable. What we have done is to decrease the value of the inductor here to 10 microhenries. We have increased the value of the peak current to this value 2.3 amperes. And then here we can see the uh, current waveform, the current through the inductor. This is the output voltage and this is the gate signal. So we can see that the duty cycle is higher than 0 0.5 and there is no stability issue in this case. And finally, let's see how to implement in a practical situation the auxiliary ramp. Here in red we can see a typical current mode integrated circuit in which we have the reference voltage, the oscillator, the error amplifier, the comparator, flip-flop to generate the gate signal and so on. So here with this resistance RT and this capacitor here CT, we can generate the ramp corresponding to the oscillator from which it is going to be generated the gate signal. 
And in this other part, we have the comparator to compare the signal of the current with the output of the error amplifier. So with this circuit here, we measure the current through the inductor, usually by measuring the current through the switch instead of the current through the inductor, which is easier and also more convenient because in this way we can also implement an overcurrent protection. So this is the signal corresponding to the current through the switch and this peak value here is equivalent to the peak current through the inductor. So the way to add the auxiliary ramp is by including this circuitry here in blue. So with this bipolar transistor and this resistance RA in series, we can take part of the main ramp and inject this ramp into the signal coming from the transistor, from the current through the transistor. Note that this bipolar transistor here is working as a voltage follower. So at this point here, we have the same ramp voltage here minus the base to emitter voltage. So at this point, we have a ramp superposed to a DC level. And if we analyze the behavior of this circuit, we will have something like this. We have the voltage coming from the measurement of the current through the transistor. We have the series resistance RF, the capacitor CF. This is to uh, filter a little bit the measurement of the current through the transistor so we can avoid high frequency spikes. And then on this other side, this part here is going to behave as a voltage source, VA, and a series resistance, RA. So the important value is the voltage that we are going to have here, VA sense, which is the one that is going to be compared to the output of the error amplifier. If we solve this circuit, considering CF as an open circuit, neglecting the effect of CF, at the switching frequency, then we will get this expression here for IV sense. So we have a factor times the measurement of the current through the switch and another factor times the auxiliary ramp. So with this, we can adjust the value of the auxiliary ramp to the required amount to assure stable operation for our converter. For this, we can play with the values of RA and RF in these expressions, and then we can get the correct proportion of the auxiliary ramp. Well, with this, we come to the end of this presentation. Please let me know if you have any comment or question. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video. Goodbye now.